So in this lesson, we're going to talk about the DNA evidence for evolution. So when you think of evolution, a really popular thing to think of is this. Uh, primates evolving into human beings. Now, yep, that's a great example of evolution, but it is only an example of evolution. In this video, we're talking more about evolution in general and what evidence we have to support the theory. And the evidence that we're talking about is DNA evidence. So first of all, we need a really clear definition for what is evolution. Well, here you can see evolution is a process of gradual and progressive change that has resulted in the development of more complex and diverse life on Earth. So in biology, when we're talking about evolution, we're talking about how over time, life has gone from simple organisms to more complex and diverse, which means more types of organisms. It takes time and time is going to be a key factor that you need to consider when we're considering evolution. So how do we use DNA as evidence to support our theory of evolution? Well, the first key bit of evidence is this here. The fact that DNA is present in all living things is a very good piece of evidence to support evolution. Now, we'll come back to this piece of evidence later, but first of all, let's have a look at how DNA has come to be in all living things. To do that, we need to look at a history of life on Earth. So, a history of life on Earth. As I explained, the key factor to consider is time. There has been an enormous amount of time. In fact, the Earth is over 4.5 billion years old. So when you think about the fact that the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, that gives you an understanding of how much time there has been for evolution to take place. So we need to realise that time is the critical factor here. Now if we go back to the Earth 4.5 billion years ago, it was a very different place. Its atmosphere was very different. In fact, all we found in the early Earth's atmosphere is high amounts of carbon dioxide. No oxygen, which is a requirement for so many organisms on the Earth today. So life as we know it today was not possible back 4.5 million years ago. And in fact, it wasn't until about 3.5 billion years ago that we actually find evidence of the first cells on the Earth. So it took about a billion years of the Earth's existence for life to even begin. What started that beginning? That's what we really want to know. Well, first of all, organic molecules started to form. This is an example here of an organic molecule that you might recognise. This is glucose, a simple carbohydrate and one that our cells depend on for energy. Glucose and other more complex organic molecules began to form. Some other examples are these. These are phospholipids, which we've learnt about previously. Phospholipids are another example of organic compounds that started to form. These are not to scale because the glucose molecule that I just brought in was much bigger, so apologies for that. Phospholipids would be definitely bigger than this if, the, if we were using a scale. But phospholipids started to form, and as you know, phospholipids form the cell membrane. So if we have phospholipids starting to emerge, then we are able to start to produce cells. And it was when the first phospholipids began to form that we started to form the first cells on the Earth. Now those first cells in those very early days, 3.5 billion years ago, were simple prokaryotic cells. Another type of organic compound that formed was one that was able to store and transfer information. That should be triggering something for you there when we think of storing and transferring information. 
we think of this molecule here, the DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid formed. That was able to store and transfer information and then that was a critical point for life on Earth because once we can store and transfer information, the complexity of life begins to improve. The reason DNA is so good at storing and transferring information is for two main reasons. One is the nitrogen bases, the A's, T's, C's and G's, which are able to carry a language or the genetic code which we know it to be. The other ability is for it to self-replicate, which is another reason why it's so good at storing and transferring information. By replicating, the DNA can be passed on from one cell to another. So the arrival of DNA was a critical one for storing and transferring information and for diversifying and increasing the complexity of life on Earth. And so now, if we fast forward to the present, which means we've gone through an awful lot of time from 3.5 billions of years ago where the first evidence of cells are until now, we find lots and lots of different types of living things and we also find that DNA is present in all of them. And that is our key bit of evidence for evolution. The fact that DNA is present in all living things suggests that all living things came from one original source. And the other key bit of evidence is in the genetic code. We've looked at this before, but here's our genetic code again. It shows us all of the different codons, those groups of three bases, and which amino acids they code for in proteins. The reason the genetic code is a piece of evidence for evolution is that the genetic code is universal. All living things use DNA, as we've discussed, but all living things also follow this genetic code when putting proteins together using amino acids. So they all speak the same language, if you like, and the language is in this genetic code. So there are two major pieces of evidence. All living things contain DNA and all living things use the same genetic code. That suggests and provides very strong evidence that all life came from a single origin. And so there we have it. That's our DNA evidence for evolution. And as you can see, we actually go much, much further back than this primate here, but we go all the way back to simple prokaryotic cells 3.5 billion years ago. All life, not just humans, but all life on Earth today can be traced back to that single origin. And there are two key pieces of evidence using DNA. All living things use DNA and all living things use the same genetic code. So that's been this lesson on the DNA evidence for evolution. As always, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. In all of my videos, I use information and material from the Biology Levels of Life textbook, workbook and teaching notes. If you want any information on how to get hold of these, just leave a comment below or email me on jeremy.s.lacornu at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe if you want regular updates on my new videos. And as always, thanks so much for your support and positive feedback. I'm really glad that my videos are helping you.